There are a lot of options available to you in the CNC software landscape. One of those options is Carbide Create or Carbide Create Pro. What I like about Carbide Create is that it is stored locally and runs on your computer. And so meaning there's no internet connection required. It's also pretty simple to use and for what I make, it's function suit my needs. Are there things I don't like about it? Of course, its layering system is tedious and bulky. And there are other things, but we'll cover that later on in this video. The main point of this video is to give you an overview of Carbag Create and Pro and see if it's gonna if it is a good fit for your CNC software workflow. But before we get into the video, hit that subscribe and bell button to keep up with all the latest DE Hammer videos. So let's get into it. We're in Carbide Create Pro build 530. Now, there is no difference in Carbide Create and Carbide Create Pro in the design part. All of it is going to be the same. You have the same functionality. And let's just run through this real quick and see what different tools and options you have here. First, you have setup. And this one right here is your job setup. And here, you're just entering in your stock that you're going to be cutting. This 180 by 100 is the acrylic I use for my small signs. Uh, you have your thickness, tool path zero. And then here you can just give some more job info like three track type and what kind of units you're using. I'm using millimeters, so we'll just hit OK. Next, we can set up the grid. Right now it's at 10 millimeter spacing. Let's say we want to go down to five. And there we go. Pretty simple. And last in the setup is the set background. Now this is so you can load in an image and then trace over it with the tools. And you can't make any tool pass from this. This is just so you can trace over and create your designs. Now, in terms of vectors, uh, you can do circles, squares, and rectangles, uh, poly lines, uh, curves, polygons, and text. Let's just go ahead and create a little circle here. And you can manually enter the size you want. We'll make that 15 millimeters and then I'll click off. Let's also create a create a rectangle. This is one thing uh, compared to Illustrator that I don't like um, when you're creating a square. I like to be able to start at the corner and drag down. This is the center. It's not a deal killer, but a little bit annoying. But let's just place uh, that right there. So what options you're not seeing are those of when you have items selected. So if we select all that, transform comes out. Now we could move this as a whole. We could scale it, rotate it, uh, mirror uh, horizontal flip it, or mirror vertical flip it. We can also do an offset vectors, and that's pretty cool, especially if you're doing one of those LED signs and you want to cut out around the whole angle, uh, around the whole design. We'll set that to, let's say, three millimeters direction. You can do the outside or inside. We're going to keep it on outside, hit apply. And now it's given us a vector shape around all of our selected. Go ahead and delete that. Reselect this. And selection, by the way, guys, is left click and drag. Uh, Panning is right click and hold down. And then to zoom in and out, just use your scroll wheel. All right, back to transform. After that, we have the aligned vectors. So if we were to hit that right now and then align centers, it aligns it all together. Let's control Z to undo that. Let's say we wanted to align it to the center of our stock. We can group all this. Now press that and align centers and it puts it towards the center of the board or our, of our stock. One of the other things that shows up is this bowline. 
And let's just select two of these here. We'll get rid of that one. Oh, it's still grouped, so we'll ungroup it. Let's get rid of that. And you have three options for bowling. This uh, joins. This one gives you the inside shape. And this one creates two different objects while cutting it. And depending on which way you want it, just uh, select them in a different order. And as you can see, previously the circle cut into the square, this time the square cut into the circle. But as you can see also, let's grab that, it gives us two separate shapes. So depending on your design, that may come in handy. Another thing we can do here is we can actually edit the nodes. And we can just grab that node there, drag it there. Now, one of the other things let's look at, let's just go and let's create a line. There we go, click done. Now you'll notice that the vectors are two different colors. You have black and then this one is blue. That is because this is an open node, so it's not closed. You couldn't pocket this, whereas you could pocket these. So that's what the blue is telling you. And let's go ahead and grab that and put it here. What we can do here, and even if you had a more complex design, this would work. And this handy tool right here will close it up. So it goes ahead and draws that, and now it is black. So now you can pocket it and you have a closed vector. All right, so one of my biggest pet peeves in Carbide Create is its layering. So let's go ahead, select this right here. We'll go to Edit and Show Layers. And notice it brings up a pop-up box. Oh no, I forgot to click my odd shape here. I can't click it. I have to hit OK. Now hold down Shift to select all of it. Go to Edit, Show Layers. And now I can change and uh, arrange layers. I find that their way of handling layers slows everything down. It's just very cumbersome, very tedious work to do it. Uh, it's not a great, it doesn't visualize what is on what layer very well. You can't just click over here to, you know, lock or see anything. You got to click here and then move selection to layer. You got to click here to hide it, here to, to show it. So to me, their layering system uh, could use a lot of work. All of these options are available both in Carbide Create and Carbide Pro. Where it starts to change is you will not see model in Carbide Create. And this is where you're gonna start getting into 3D stuff. Here, let's go back again and let's just create a square. Center it real quick. Go back to model, select. And if we click on this, you can change uh, how the 3D or 2.5D, excuse me, model is uh, curved. There's round, angled, and flat. We'll keep that round. Uh, angle, 45 degrees. Uh, you have height limit, the actual height, and then a couple other parameters here that you can change. The 2.5D modeling is a video all in and of itself. So we're just going to hit apply here show 3D, and when we're in this 3D, left lets you change your view, right is your pan, and then again, you can still just scroll in and out. And that gave us a, a dome shaped out of that square. Hit done, and now you can see it generates a uh, depth map. There are other features as well. You can import a depth map, and you can also uh, export it. But again, that's a whole nother, nother video. The main thing to note here with Carbide Create is that it does not handle SPL or OBJ files. So everything is going to be generated off a 
D image. So let's just go ahead and delete that right now. We've got our square again. Now here's where Carbide Create and Pro also uh, differ here. In Carbide Create, you're gonna have contour, pocket, texture, drill, V-carve, and advanced V-carve. The difference is going to be the engrave, and then you can also see this 3D rough and 3D finish path. Again, I'm not going to go into detail of what all these do. There's lots of great videos out there going over that. I just want to show you that really the only difference between Carbide Create and Carbide Create Pro is the engrave and this 3D toolpath. So there's not a whole lot of difference between the two. In both, you can create your own tool databases. And to do that, you just go to show, I mean, go to edit, show tool database. And here you go. Uh, you can see I started a test library here. So let's just walk through that real quick to add a new library, just new library. You can select what kind of material it's for, Machine, I just leave on Nomad and then give it a name. We'll call this test B. And let's say I want to take and copy something from somewhere else. We'll just right click on this, copy, come down to V here and paste. And now it's there. Or you can select on the type of tool you're trying to add and you can right click new tool and then pick is it an in mill, a ball mill, a V mill, or an engraver. So again, this is available both on Carbide Create and Carbide Pro. So there you have it. Carbide Create slash Pro in a nutshell. Now we didn't go over in depth of all the features of Pro. Uh, those of course will be videos unto themselves. So is Carbide Create Pro worth uh, shelling out your hard earned money? Well, of course, like I hinted earlier, it depends on your workflow. If you're going to be attempting 2.5D or anything like that, yes, you're going to need to shell out the money. Are there other programs that can handle it? Of course. Is Carbide Create Pro better than them? I don't know. I haven't used other programs. The only other one I've used is the free D DMAP to G code. So, Stay tuned for other videos where we delve into that a little bit more and we look at other software and compare their functions. One of the things right off the bat is Carbide Create Pro does not handle STLs. So you will have to convert those into depth maps before you do any 2.5D cutting. I do have another video that shows you how you can take those uh, STLs, import them into Blender and create a depth map that you can import into Carbide Create Pro. Carbide Create Pro offers uh, two options of payment. You can do a yearly subscription uh, for the licensing over $120, or you can pay a perpetual license fee of $360 and get one year of free updates. So say any, if you bought it today in one year, you would get any updates for that uh, for Carbide Create Pro for free. After that, you would have to pay $120 to get the latest and greatest build of Carbide Create Pro. So if you want that functionality, maybe on average, the $10 per month is what would work for you. I'm not in your shoes financially or in, you know, how it works with the rest of your setup. But for me personally, the perpetual license was the best option because no matter what, in five, 10 years, I can always go back and I can always use, the, use that software. I don't have to worry about reactivating or anything like that. I always have a way to get my designs out. Or let's say the company goes under and you only had the subscription, you would not be able to access it. I, again, I'm not trying to tell you that's the best way to go or that's the way you should go. These are just things you need to take in consideration when it comes to software. Can you access it if anything happens to that company down the road? 
Is there other software out there with more robust features? Yes. <laughs> and again, this is not to shame or promote this one over that. This one is to just give you an overview and let you see, is this what I need? It comes out to what do you want to do? So my main thing would be to encourage you to go try out the different software. See what feels right to you, what is more intuitive, what works for you. Don't let other people browbeat you or tell you you need to use this and this is what everyone else is using. It just may not be for you. It may be for you, who knows, but you won't know until you try. Lots of software out there offer free uh, trial periods or free reduced versions. So check them out, play around with them all, and see what's going to be best for you. Don't get stuck in a system that you hate or you just don't like because other people have told you to do so. Thank you all for watching. Remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, it's okay. You can give it a thumbs down. Remember to subscribe and press the bell button as well. And until next time, keep making stuff.